Mm -mm -mm. Welcome back to another tutorial today. We're gonna be working on this square. I know, I put this blue one on top, but this is the one we did last week. So we're gonna be working on square number nine, and this is for our Tunisian stitch afghan. I swear, one of these days, I'm gonna remember. We're on square nine, I should remember by now. But here it is. <laughs> so <laughs> here's the stitch we're gonna be working on. It is really, really similar to what we did last week, but not, so let me show you. Okay, so this is the one we did last week. I know, it's not, it's not the most visible in this color, but I'm making a gem tone blanket, so I'm sorry. But all right, so here's the stitch. We used a knit stitch for our row number two. So for those of you that have been watching the series, so for row number two, we did knit stitch, but for row number two on this one, we're gonna be doing Tunisian simple stitch. And look at the difference it makes. So it opens up the stitch. Oh, I just love this. So I'm gonna use this for a blanket soon. So, you know, be prepared for that. Cause I've got a new niece coming. I'm so excited. She's gonna be born in December, so. Yeah, sister, if you're watching this, I'm gonna make you a blanket like this. I hope you like it. But yeah, so here's our stitch. I'm gonna be using it also for maybe a summer or fall project soon because it's just really cool. So let's get started. I know, I'm sitting here just blabbing. Okay, I'm gonna stop. Let me move my coffee. Let's move all this stuff. Let's start crocheting. Ah, where is it? I don't even know where the end of my thread is. I just filmed the Spanish tutorial, so I have like, I make the sample and then I have to pull it apart so that I can film the English tutorial. So look at all of this. Look at this mess. It's just, there's yarn everywhere. All right, let's get moving. Uh, you guys can still see all this. All right, let's move it. So we're gonna begin with a slip knot and I've already showed you how to do it. This is video number nine. So if you don't know how to make a slip knot, go back to the playlist, which will be somewhere up here. Go watch video one through, I think it's like four where I show you how to do that and a chain. But let's move on. This stitch is worked in even multiples, so any even number of stitches you wanna crochet. We're gonna be working 26 rows, and then row number 27 is our bind off. For the square, which this is an eight inch square, I know it doesn't look it, but it is. Uh, it's an eight inch square or 20 centimeters for you guys that use centimeters. You're gonna to need to make a chain of 28 stitches. All right, moving on. So we're gonna just chain any even number here. So I'm just gonna go with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Oh no! 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Let's just make a small sample of 16. That'll do. So any even, even number, we're gonna move on to our foundation row. And this is just a regular foundation row. So you're going to skip this first stitch, go into the second one, insert your hook, yarn over, and pull up a loop. And you're gonna repeat this in every stitch of the chain. Again, normally I try to go a lot slower when I'm showing these beginning steps, but this is the ninth video we've done for this series. So I'm gonna start showing this less and less unless I really need to for a particular stitch. So um, let's get here to the end. All right, so this stitch is gonna be very similar to what we did last week as far as the foundation row and row number one. So it's gonna be the same. So at the end of the foundation row, you're gonna do a return pass, which is different than what we normally do. So this is gonna be, um, I'm gonna call it, a special return pass. We're gonna do chain two. So there's one, two, then we're gonna yarn over and pull through three loops. So here are our loops. So yarn over, pull through three, and then chain one. And then for the rest of this, it's gonna be yarn over, pull through three, chain one, yarn over, pull through three, chain one, yarn over, pull through three, chain one, so forth and so on, um, until you are left with just two loops. So you're gonna get to the end and it's gonna look like this. You're gonna need to chain one. You're still gonna be left with two loops, but you're gonna yarn over and pull through two and that closes off your foundation row. Let's get started then with, what is this? Row number one. So for row number one, like I said earlier in the video, row, what is it, the foundation row and row number one are the same as what we did last week for this blue square. So for those of you that didn't watch that one, no worries, we're gonna go over it right here. You're gonna skip this first vertical stitch. You've already got it on your hook. We're gonna crochet into this chain space between the first and second vertical stitch. So all you're gonna do is insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop. Although, you know what, I think, I wanna say last week, I skipped this one and I just started with a yarn over and I went right into this space right here. I believe it's what I did. So you can start it either way. I'm gonna start it the other way because I have to make it match the Spanish channel. <laughs> 
and I just finished filming the Spanish tutorial and what I did is I insert my hook into this one. So for the sake of keeping the tutorials the same, ultimately it isn't gonna matter, so pick one. Either crochet into this space or skip this one and just yarn over and go into the next space. So I know I'm making it so much more confusing than it needs to be. Okay, so insert your hook into the chain space, yarn over, pull up a loop like this, and then we're going to skip these two vertical stitches but you still have to have the same stitch count. So you're gonna yarn over, skip these two, and go into this next space. Insert your hook and pull up a loop. You're gonna get to those two vertical stitches again. So you're gonna yarn over, skip these two, and insert your hook into the chain space and pull up a loop. Yarn over, skip these two, chain space, pull up a loop. So see, it's what we did last week. The only difference is that because I started, like I said at the beginning of this row, I skipped this first stitch in the blue video. Um, you can choose to skip it and start it the same way, or you can choose to skip this last one, which is what I'm gonna do now. So you're gonna yarn over, skip these two vertical stitches. I'm going to skip this chain space and go directly into my final stitch of the row. I'll show you why here in just a second. So now if we go through and count our loops, they always have to have the same number of uh, loops as you had initial chains. So if you're making the square and you chain to 28, you should have 28 loops on your hook. If you are making a small sample or any other size sample like I am, I had 16 uh, stitches as my initial chain. I should have 16 stitches on my loop, or <laughs> loops on my hook, goodness. All right, so you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, woohoo. If I would have cast on in this final one, it starts to increase and then it's gonna be a completely different stitch. So. I mean, it, I guess the stitch isn't different, but it's gonna increase and you're gonna end up with a trapezoid instead of ending up with a square and that's not what we're doing. So, you know, pick one. Okay, moving on to the return pass. So we're at the end, we just cast on row number one. Our return pass is just gonna be a regular return pass. So yarn over, pull through one, and now yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and that's it. It's a regular return pass, super exciting. I know filming the series is just being a lot, it's so much more relaxing because since it's a series, I mean, if you watch it in order, I don't have to explain all these things as detailed as I normally do for some of the other tutorials. So it's kind of refreshing. I can chat with you guys about other things that don't necessarily have to do with the stitch all the time. All right, so let's get to row number two. Now this is where the stitch is gonna be different. Um, so for this blue square, we did a knit stitch on row number two. For this one, we're gonna use a Tunisian simple stitch and that's what's gonna give us this really cool spacing. I really love this stitch in case, you know, you couldn't tell by how excited I sound. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go into here. This row, you're gonna just do Tunisian simple stitch. So you're gonna insert your hook. So skip the first one. I should probably always say that. Skip the first vertical stitch you already have it on your hook. Go into the next one, you're gonna insert your hook behind the top leg of the stitch and just the top leg. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Go into the next one and this is gonna be a bit of an open stitch. So, so you can see the back leg way back here and the front leg. You only want the front leg. So insert your hook behind the front leg, yarn over and pull up a loop. Repeat in the next one, yarn over, pull up a loop and in the next one. And that's it. So it's just a Tunisian simple stitch all the way across. When you get to the end, you're gonna use this same return pass that we used for this stitch, um, for the foundation row. Yeah, so there we go. But I don't really wanna turn off my camera, so let's chat. I have a change in, I've changed my career. There we go, gosh, that wasn't so hard to say. I've changed my career. Um, I was previously working in HR and I decided I did not want to. <laughs> I didn't want to do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> also, there was a whole lot of stuff that changed in my life um, as well. There was there have been several changes. It's been a really good year. So many good changes. Um, anyway, so I'm going to be a preschool teacher. I know, I am so excited. I don't even know what to do. I love to paint and color and do things and hang out with small people. And I'm so, I'm so excited. I can't even, oh my gosh, it's going to be great. I'm going to be starting, what, July 6th? Yes, is my first day. I'm so pumped. <laughs> so I'm filming this like the week before. So when you guys watch this, it would have been my first week at work. So anyway, yeah, wish me luck. Let's see how that goes. Um, it'll be so much fun. Oh my gosh, I can't, ah, I'm so excited. All right, anyway, 
So we're at the end of row number two. I know, I filled up all this time with all this personal stuff that y'all probably didn't even care to hear. Sorry. All right, we're gonna begin the special foundation row. <laughs> yes, no, God, I can't even speak now. Uh, return pass, the return pass. See, this is what happens when I chat with y'all. I get so happy. We're gonna work the uh, special return pass that we've worked for the foundation row. And that begins with a chain two. So chain one, chain two. And now we're gonna yarn over and pull through three. And then chain one, yarn over, pull through three. Chain one, yarn over, pull through three. Chain one, and so forth, until you are left with two loops on your hook. And I'm gonna show you a blooper at the end of this. <laughs> Cause I filmed this a little earlier and I ended up messing up my stitch count. Yeah, I'll show it to you. So, you know, stay to the end of the video if you wanna watch it. All right, um, so you're gonna be left with the two loops. You're going to chain one, you're still gonna be left with two. You're gonna yarn over and pull through both of those to be left with just one loop on your hook. And that's it. You're gonna repeat rows one and two, a total of 26 times. For row number 27 is gonna be your bind off. And the bind off is gonna look like this. So I try to make the bind off as similar as I can to the final or to the first row. It doesn't always work out the best. This one, I think it did a pretty good job. Um, Cause yeah, these stitches, I don't know if they exist anywhere else. I just sit and play with different stitches while I'm reading on my couch and come up with all of these. So I think there's been one, two. There's been two stitches that I've done out of the nine. Is this square number nine? I think this is square number eight or nine. I can't remember. Out of all of the ones I've done so far, I've only seen two before. The other ones I just kind of play around. So they might exist. I'm not saying they don't. They probably do. I just, I don't know. I haven't watched any other tutorials. So All right, so let's work on the bind off. So after you've completed all 26 rows, you should end up in a row that looks just like this. So this is how you're gonna complete your bind off. It's gonna be similar to the one that we did last week. Well, it's gonna be the same actually as what we did last week. You're gonna insert your hook into this chain space, pull up a loop. Once you have two loops on your hook, you're gonna yarn over and pull through two for a single crochet. We're going to do a single crochet two together for this one. So you're gonna insert your hook as a Tunisian simple stitch behind both of these legs. So these um, two vertical stitches, see? So behind the top leg of both vertical stitches, you're gonna yarn over, pull up a loop, and once you have two loops on your hook, you're gonna close the single crochet like so. Then you're gonna insert your hook into this chain space and yarn over, pull up a loop, and then you're going to single crochet. And then single crochet two together, like so, and that's it. So it's just always the ch uh, work on the chain space and then the single crochet two together using the two vertical stitches until you get to the end of the row. And at the end of the row, which I'm really trying to hurry here, <laughs> but it's kind of difficult. I can't move too quickly. I don't know why. Just moving kind of slow here. Um, once you get to the end of the row, we're gonna chain one and make a small knot and that's it. So here we're at the end. For this one, you, okay, so for the return pass, I should probably, not return pass, the bind off row, you do, a single crochet in this first chain space and you're gonna make one in this last space as well. So insert your hook into this last little open space, single crochet, and then single crochet into the final stitch of the row. Um, I don't know if this happens to everyone necessarily because everybody crochets a little bit different so the tension will change. And I generally have a very loose tension here at the beginning of my stitch and then I end up like several rows later, the tension ends up tightening up and I end up with a project that's a little narrower at the top than at the bottom if I'm not careful. Um, so that's why I, I try to add an extra stitch when I do the bind off row so that we end up with the initial chain and the bind off stitch or the bind off row uh, with about the same width. So it looks, you know, like this. And that way they're the same width. Yeah, I'm just repeating myself now. All right, so we're gonna chain one. That's gonna make a small knot down here, tighten that up. Cut your yarn, you're gonna be left with two tail ends, much like this one, go ahead and weave those in. If you're just beginning the series now, I show you how to do this in the first, I think it's like one through three videos, if uh, you wanna watch that. Um, otherwise, you know, there are, it, I cover it in other tutorials. But that's our stitch for today. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I post videos, well, whenever I can. I'm doing this series 
every week, at least I'm trying to, because I accidentally skipped last week, but I had company visiting from out of town. I'm sorry. Um, but I try to post as often as I can. If you want to see more of my work, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm at mode.bespoke, or you can always check out my website, which is modebespoke.com, where I have a ton of patterns and stuff. <laughs> so go check that out. I will see you all again in the next tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna go finish my coffee. I'll see you soon. So you complete the row. When you get to the end, you should be left with just two loops on your hook. And I did something terribly wrong. I don't know what it is. Because look, I, yes, I was left with the two loops, but look at that. Look at that. That's not right. I gotta go count my stitches. I should have done that, but I was lazy. Mm -hmm.